How's it going folks? It is Matt back with another crypto video. Today's a video on Digifight and as promised last night, today I have special guest Matthew Cornelis. He is a core member of the Digibyte awareness team and he's the creator of the Digi ID, Anthem ID, Authenticator and Password Generator. So Matthew, thank you for coming on this show and uh, just wanted to kind of start it off by asking you, uh, you know, what originally led you into cryptocurrency? What got you interested in Digibyte and then ultimately how did you end up becoming a core member of the Digibyte Awareness Team? Well, I first got interested in uh, cryptocurrency way back when uh, Bitcoin was only around a dollar when I went to a hacking convention uh, and they were talking about it. Unfortunately, I got talked out of uh, putting any money into it at the time. That would have been nice. Right. Um, so, uh, about 2017, I had a graphics card that wasn't doing anything that I used for generating panoramas and uh, decided to uh, start uh, mining, uh, start, just put it on to start mining and I was using a program called uh, Emos Miner which automatically checks uh, the uh, profitability of each uh, coin and just keep switching back and forth uh, depending on whatever is most profitable and miningpool.hub would automatically uh, sell those coins and then put it to uh, buy ether at the times so that I was buying. So uh, at one point though my mining rig started going all digital and I was curious why and what this coin was. So I looked it up, and at that point, I switched to actually start collecting Digibyte. I've been, uh, ever since, I've been heavy into the community, and I really liked that they had uh, a lot of tutorials on how to get into programming and using it. Uh, the, I've since learned there's a lot of uh, limitations to those programs, so I started using Bitcoin code instead. but. As I learn, I've uh, just kept finding more and more things that I really like about it. Just started advocating a lot for it. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I, I wonder how many people out there like actually have a similar situation where they heard about cryptocurrency years ago and then they unfortunately never got into it. I had a similar situation in 2014. I had a friend tell me about Bitcoin. He was, he was actually a software engineer and he mining it and I never jumped into it at that time and I regret that as well and then I also found it interesting that like once you started mining Digibyte you started looking into it and then ultimately you got like more involved in the project that's kind of the same situation I was in and I feel like a lot of people out there once they dive down the rabbit hole so to speak learning about Digibyte and everything that it has to offer it's just kind of like a, a shocker almost like how superior the technology is compared to a lot of the projects out there in, in terms of speed security all those types of things and that's that's kind of what drew me to digibyte as well so when i well yesterday when i was talking i said that you wanted to come on the channel and talk about something that was related to digi assets as well as the a uh, new mining algorithm that's coming up in July, UdoCrypt. So would you want to tell us what you were wanting to get out there? Sure. Well, I've been looking into the capabilities of digi assets, And uh, also, I, being in a cold environment where I am, and enjoy liking the mining and having relatively cheap and 100% green power. I have uh, 10 kilowatts of solar panels on my house. And, uh, wow. What I don't produce from solar panels uh, where I live is entirely done by uh, water and wind power. So it's a very environmentally friendly area for the hydro. <laughs> but I, yeah, so I was looking at digi assets and uh, I was looking at the price of MPGAs and I decided I want to buy a bunch of the MPGA miners because uh, they're efficient for uh, mining and photocrypt. And uh, since I don't want to spend the money all myself, I decided, well, let's uh, create assets for them. I can sell, sell the assets for $5 per asset. Each asset would uh, give you 1% of what the uh, of what an FPGA, 
PGA manages to mine. And since I can track what wallets the assets are in, I can actually pay out uh, the uh, winnings to those assets, to those uh, wallets of whoever happens to be holding the asset. So you can buy the asset now, you can hold it for a while. If you decide you don't want it anymore, you can actually sell it, or you can just transfer it to another wallet in your account to kind of help anonymize, anonymize uh, your holdings if you want. That's a fantastic idea. So basically, once DigiAssets is launched, or you were saying you could even create it on the test net as well, right? Yeah, they can be created on the test net, but obviously that won't be very helpful at the moment right. because all the addresses will be wrong. Makes but sense. In the, meantime, in the meantime, I'll create a table of all the addresses I need to send out to and I'll send all the funds to whoever, every time a block is found. But my general plan is to be uh, every time a block is found, or at least whenever I owe somebody 100 digibyte, send them all the, their funds. Or if they transfer the asset to another account, I pay out whatever the owings on that address is, and the new one address starts accruing on its value. I think it's a fantastic idea. So, for the viewers, if they if they weren't understanding that correctly, Matthew is going to be creating a digi asset, which will there will be a hundred of them, right? No, there will be considerably more than 100. I uh, currently have uh, I currently have at least 1,000 that would be made. Okay, so, so it's there will be 100 per FPGA. Okay, so there's 100 assets per FPGA mining rig. $5 buy-in gives you one asset or 1% 1 of one FPGA mining rig. And then simply holding that digi asset you can see who holds that digi asset. You don't even need to know their name. You just need to know the address. And then uh, once that person reaches a hundred digibyte in value, then you just automatically send it to whoever owns that digi asset. That's correct. That is awesome. So if people were interested in purchasing 1% or more of these FPGA mining rigs, how would they go about to do that? Well, they can, uh, Contact me on uh, Telegram if they want to pay with Digibyte. Uh, I can send them a Digibyte address. Um, if you're wanting to buy any large quantity, I'd prefer U.S. dollars, so I don't have to since I have to buy all the rigs in U.S. dollars. But for smaller percentages, yeah, I can accept Digibyte at 500 Digibyte per asset. Makes sense. Makes sense. So back to what you were saying about you being essentially completely off the grid. You got your own power generation systems, so this, in theory, should be all profit, right? Am I wrong or right? Uh, well, for the cold months of the year, yes, this is 100% profit, so that's generally September to uh, April. For the fact, it snowed yesterday, so, wow. but it, it melted, but it did snow, which is weird. <laughs> that is weird. But, yeah, so I generally have to heat my house from September to April anyways, so the cost of running the rigs is essentially just paying the heating bill, so it's uh, only during the summer months that uh, I'd be subtracting any costs from holding it. Otherwise, okay. all the profits would be getting paid out. Uh, my stake in the uh, mining pool, I will be splitting up 25% going to Digibat. And uh, the rest will be going to Digibyte.rocks for uh, its expenses. Well, that's awesome, man. So, I mean, being May 6th now and it's snowing, how, how long is the typical Canadian summer? <laughs> well, that, gener that drastically depends on where you live. So, uh, southern Ontario is, is level with northern California. It gets a lot of get similar weather, whereas the North Pole gets about six weeks of summer. <laughs> wow. That sounds terrible. I, uh, well, it, I've been up to uh, the northern uh, edge of Baffin Island, which is uh, only a thousand kilometers or so from the North, north Pole, and yeah, it was negative 60 while I was there. Uh, 
But yes. that's, that's they have they do get up to eighteen degrees for the summer for a few weeks, which is nice and everything blooms and then it freezes again. <laughs> yeah, I mean eighteen degrees summer. Definitely a place <laughs> that I would like to visit, but I am not a not a long term cold weather kind of person. Well, Baffin Island would be a little hard to get to, and so it took me an entire day to get there, and I was, and uh, the company I was working for was paying the bill, because they wanted me to work there for a month. Makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, but I think it was about $6,000 if you had to get there yourself. Wow. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather buy a big plane. <laughs> I'd rather go to Europe. <laughs> yeah, that too, that too. But... That will wrap up the video. I thank you for the time. Um, if you guys are interested, I'll provide details in the description on how to get in contact with Matthew. Again, there he's setting up an FPGA mining farm. Uh, he's creating a digi asset soon. Uh, each asset will represent one percent of a single FPGA, and as long as you hold that asset, you will receive payouts every time uh, the value of that reaches a hundred digibyte. And then, uh, as he said earlier, keep in mind, uh, it's, it's a digi asset, so that means you are free to trade it, sell it, do whatever you want with it. And uh, there's no need to, like if you sell it, there's no need to let him know because he can see what address holds that asset. So uh, basically, whoever holds that asset will be receiving uh, the digibyte as these payouts roll out. So uh, again, Matthew, thank you for your time, and that will wrap up the video.